Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be working with how to solve polynomial and rational inequalities when what that looks like is a problem like this. Given a problem where it's a polynomial or a rational function, they're always going to ask you to figure out when it's greater than zero or when it's less than zero. Now what this means in respect to a graph and what I did is this picture that we have right here is this graph. If we were to graph x squared plus 2x minus 24, we would get this equation right here and this graph. Now whenever you see a question that asks you when is it greater than zero, what it's really asking you is at what points is your graph going to be above the x-axis. And then any time you get a question where it says when is your graph less than zero, it wants to know when it's going to be below the x-axis, so down here. Those are the two type of questions that you're going to get. When is your polynomial greater than zero or less than zero? Or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? So we're going to go ahead and get started. But the problem is they don't want you to just graph this on a graph and calculate and determine it. What they want you to do is they want you to use algebra. So because they want us to use algebra, we have to factor out. So your first step is always to factor it out. Now this is going to factor out to x plus 6 and x minus 4. Now what we'll notice is if we go back to this graph, the points at where everything's going to change are your x-intercepts. So the reason why we have to factor out is because we want to figure out where these x-intercepts are. Where is this change going to happen? So what I'm going to do is I factor it out, and then the next step is we'll solve my for my x-intercepts. Set them both equal to 0. x plus 6 is equal to 0, as well as x minus 4 is equal to 0. Solve for them, you'll get x equals to negative 6 and x equals to 4. Your next step after this is you want to actually put it on a number line. So what you're going to do is we're going to graph negative 6 and 4 on a number line. You're going to put negative 6, you're going to put 4. Then what I like to do is I like to make boundaries. I like to separate every single boundary from each other. Then you want to pick numbers. It doesn't matter what numbers you pick as long as you pick numbers that are less than negative 6 in between negative 6 and 4 and greater than 4. So I'll pick the number that's really close to a negative 7, something between negative 6 and 4, that's easy, 0, and 5. Now to figure out if it's going to give me a value that's greater than 0, I have to plug in these values into my factored form. Now the reason I plug into my factored form is because it's easier. So you're going to put in the parentheses, I'm going to first plug in negative 7, and that's going to equal to negative 7 plus 6, negative 7 minus 4, which gives you negative 1 times negative 11, which gives you a positive 11. Now ask yourself, is that what we're looking for? Are we looking for a value that's greater than 0, which is 11? Yes, 11 is greater than 0, so this is going to get a check mark. Then we're going to plug in the next point, f of 0, because we want to see if it's going to give us a value greater than 0. Plug it into the factored equation, 0 plus 6, 0 minus 4, 6 times negative 4 equals negative 24, but that's negative. I don't want a negative value. So because it's not greater than 0, this is going to get an x. And then the last one, I'm going to plug in 5. And that's going to give me 5 plus 6, 5 minus 4. And that's going to give me 11 times 1, which gives me positive 11, which works out because that's greater than 0. So this gets a check mark. So now we know the boundaries of when our graph is going to be greater than 0. So your next, an your next step is to write your answer. They want you to express your answer. So what we're going to do is, since all these numbers left of negative 6 work out, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, etc., we're going to put it all the way from negative infinity, because that's where it goes up to, and it stops at negative 6. Union, well the next one that works is from 4 to all the way to infinity. And this would be the way we express our answer. So anytime you ever ask you for a polynomial when it's greater or less than 0, what we need to do is solve for the x-intercepts, so factor out, graph them on a number line, pick boundaries, pick numbers between them, left and right, plug them into your factored equation, and see if they give you a value greater than 0, because if they do, you get a check mark, and if they don't, you get an x. Then the ones that work out, the ones that you have a check mark, you're going to express an interval notation. Okay, so we're going to work on a couple more. So the next one is 2x cubed minus 98 is less than or equal to 0. So first up, factor out. Well, I can take out a 2x, so I'm going to take out a 2x. I'll put it under here so it can help me simplify. That's going to give me x squared minus 49. 
Then I notice there's a difference of squares, so I can factor a little bit more. Set them all equal to zero. Anytime there's an x on the outside, it always equals to zero. Opposite, x equals to seven. Opposite, x equals to negative seven. So next step, graph all these numbers on a number line. Negative seven, zero, positive seven, and draw these lines so you can separate the boundaries. Now it doesn't matter the, the points you pick. I like to pick them nice and simple like negative eight, negative one, one, eight. And then we have to plug them into our parentheses. So remember, you're gonna plug them into here. Now a shortcut. A shortcut to plug this in is to do all these mentally. What I suggest is, we know we have to plug a negative eight into our fractured form. So that's step. what is two times negative eight? Is that gonna give you a negative number or a positive number? Well, two times negative eight is gonna give me a negative number. Then I'm gonna plug negative eight into the next one. Negative eight minus seven, well, that's gonna give me a negative number as well. So inside is gonna be a negative. Negative eight plus seven will also be a negative number. Now the reason why I'm only working with negatives is because I only care about if it's gonna be less than zero or greater than zero. I don't actually care about the number. So because I just care about if it's a negative number, I can work with signs. So a negative times a negative times a negative will end up giving you a negative. Now is that what we're looking for? Are we looking for a number that's less than zero, which is negative? Yes. So that means that negative eight and any number left of it is gonna get be a check mark and it's gonna work out. So then we're gonna plug in negative one. So when we plug in negative one, two times negative, negative, negative one minus negative seven still remains a negative. Negative one plus seven will be a positive. Then ask yourself, multiply. Negative times a negative, positive, times a positive will be a positive. And that's not what we want. We want a number that's less than zero. So this doesn't work out. Then plug in the next point, f of one, two times one, positive, one minus seven, negative, one plus seven, positive, positive times a negative times a positive, negative works out because we want something less than zero. And the last one, f of eight, positive, 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 which gives you a positive, which is not what we want because we want negative, so you want an x. Now your next step is, well, let's express it in interval notation. But what you need to be careful about is any time you have a less than or greater than or a greater than or equal to, what we need to do is anytime you see that equal to sign, your actual real points are going to get a bracket. And that's because it's saying that it can equal to zero, so it wants the x-intercepts. So then the way we express our answer is, well, all of these numbers work all the way, all the way, all the way to negative infinity. So it's going to be negative infinity to negative seven, but since negative seven is a real point, we're going to put a bracket. Union zero to seven in brackets because those are real points. And that's why we got check marks, and this is how we express our answer. Now, also, another thing I want to point out anytime your problem has a pattern, it's a kind of a hint that lets you know that you did it successfully. Now, it's not always going to be a pattern. You're not going to always get a check, X, check, X, or vice versa. But when you do get a pattern, it lets you know that you, you did it right. Okay? And then our last one, our last one's going to be a rational expression what happens when you have a fraction. Now the second you have a fraction, you know that we have to get an LCD. But more importantly, I can never have greater than a fraction or greater than a number or less than a number. I need this to always be zero, the right hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this entire thing to the left hand side. So since it's negative, I'm going to add it so I get 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x squared minus 7x plus 10 is greater than zero. Then my next step is, well, I need to find an LCD. So before I find an LCD, I need to factor this out. This is going to factor out to x minus 5, x minus 2. So then my LCD, what they all have, remember, LCD is whatever the denominator has. It has an x minus 2, so I'm going to put an x minus 2. But what else does your denominator have? It has an x minus 5. So an x minus 2 and an x minus 5 is your LCD. So now I'm going to multiply whatever is missing my denominator. Well, this is missing what? What's it missing? x minus 5. So I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 5. Is this missing anything? No. So I'm going to leave it just like that. So I'm going to multiply x minus 5 times 1. I get x minus 5 plus 1. I always simplify. Gives you x minus 4. Now once it's simplified, put it over your LCD because you just can't forget about it. 
and then put greater than zero. So now once you simplify your fractions, your next step to actually solve for when it's going to be greater than zero is to set the top and the bottoms equal to zero. X minus four equals to zero, which you get X equals to four. X minus two equals to zero, so you get X equals to two. X minus five equals to zero, so you get X is equal to five. Now what you want to do is you want to put everything on a number line. Two, four, five, and then pick points anywhere less than, middle, middle, right then. So any, any points, remember any points work. Three, four point five, and six. Now, you can plug these points in, and I'm just going to do one example, and then the rest I'm just going to give you the answers to. When you plug in zero, remember you're plugging into the factored form. And rather than actually finding a value, just care about if it's greater than zero. We care if it's a positive. So if we do it, well, zero minus four is going give, to give me a negative over zero minus two, which is a negative, times zero minus five, which is a negative. So negative over negative times divided by negative is going to be negative over a positive, which gives you a negative. And is that what we're looking for? Are we looking for a number that's a negative number? No, we're looking for a number that's greater than zero, which is a positive number. So this is going to get an x. And then if you do the same thing for the rest of them, this is going to get a check, x, check. So now, once you have your answer, once you have your answer, we'll express this in interval notation. What worked out? 2 to 4. So your answer is going to be 2 comma 4 union 5 to where? 5 to infinity. So anytime you have a rational expression, anytime you have a rational expression, what you want to do is make sure you get an LCD so that you can get you can get it simplified to get one expression. And anytime you see that it's not greater or less than a zero, bring everything to the left hand side so that you can factor it out and work it out. Okay? And don't forget, anytime it's a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you need to make sure you put brackets. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope it helped.